Hello again, it's Rick here from The Game Creators and uh, here we are with another tutorial on App Game Kit. And today we're going to start looking at 2D physics. And App Game Kit has uh, the well-known Box 2D physics built into it. And you can make use of this system to create physics objects, uh, sprites that basically interact with each other. So I've made uh, a little demo and uh, I'm going to show you sort of three key parts of this demo and, and build it up as we go. And I've learned a lot because uh, I've not done this before, so uh, hopefully you'll learn something too. So the idea was I was going to have a bat at the bottom of the screen and I was going to fire out these balls in the middle of the screen and the idea is to keep the balls bouncing, don't let them fall down off the bottom of the screen. So the first thing to do is make a bat and have it move. This is the main main.agc. We've got some hash include uh, up here. So we'll not focus on these straight away. We, we set up the window, give it a name and the size of the screen, virtual resolution, orientation. These commands were created by AGK. We don't need to worry too much about them. Um, so what the first command to look at is set raw mouse visible zero. What that does is it turns the mouse pointer off because because we don't want to see that uh, in our game. Uh, I've got some variables here. We'll come to those later. And then we go to make sprites. So let's have a look at make sprites. Okay, there's a routine here. And we're going to create a bat. So we create an image color command which creates sprite number one with the uh, RGB R being 255, so we get a red color and um, fully opaque. And then we create a sprite based on that um, image. So create sprite bat. And bat, if we go back to main.hc, is, is 1. So sprite 1 is using image 1. Then we set the size of the bat uh, 100 in the X and 20 in the Y, so it's nice and thin. And uh, we position the bat at that location on the screen, which is uh, about halfway uh, in the X and low down uh, in the Y. We, we set sprite physics on. What that does is it makes the bat a physics object, uh, but it's using mode 3. And mode 3 means it's going to not be affected by forces and collisions. So it's, a, it's called a kinematic um, object or physics object. So when the balls hit the bat, they're not going to make the bat rotate or push the bat down, which is what happened when I first tried this. So that's quite important that. Set sprite physics on, sprite number, and then the mode 3. Now the next routine, it load image 2, and it's going to load a small uh, football image, which is actually a default image that comes with AGK. You, uh, you'll see it in some of the um, example demos. So it loads it loads it in to image number two and then it goes from i equals one to ball total. And if we go back to main.agc ball total is 15. So it's going to create 15 balls. Um, so it creates sprite one plus i so sprite number uh, two using image number two and then it sets the sprite x position of that sprite minus 100 so it's off the screen off the left hand side of the screen because we don't want to see these initially we we'll just want to create 15 of these balls then something else we do is we set physics wall bottom to zero now anything to do with physics is uh, automatically app game kit will set up uh, walls on the top the bottom and the sides so when things hit the sides of the walls of the screen it'll bounce them back in now i don't want the bottom to be there so i you set physics wall bottom to zero. We'll ignore this because we'll come, come to that later. So go back, um, yeah, so make sprites, it'll make the bat, it'll make the balls, and then we have a routine in the do loops, this is the main loop, go sub move bat. So let's have a look at move bat. Okay, it's very simple. Um, we get the mouse's x position, so bat x, we make the variable bat x equal to get raw mouse x. And that will make bat x whatever value the mouse um, x is. Then we just check, we do a check to make sure that bat x isn't greater than the width of the screen minus the size of the bat. 
and if it is we force it to the width of the screen minus the back and that means that the back can never leave or partially leave the screen on the right so that's what that check is doing there and finally we set the sprite position of the bat based on bat x which we've set here and the current uh, y position of the bat and then we return back so we go back to main to agc so we've got to do loop and we're just going to go round and round checking the um, uh, moving the bat so let's just run that and we'll see a red bat appear at the bottom and we can see we can move left and right you see the mouse pointer disappears when it goes into the game now if I quit that and if I turned off set raw mouse visible and run again you'll see that the mouse pointer is there we don't really want that, it's getting in the way of the game so that's why we have that turned on okay so that's the bat let's put the balls into the game so we have uh, go sub shoot a ball so shoot a ball, here's a routine called shoot a ball so this routine just checks uh, a random number between 1 and 60 and if that random number is 5 um, and we haven't reached the maximum number of balls ball to move is less than or equal to ball total let's have a look at ball to total 15 okay ball to move is 2 at the very start then, uh, then we can carry on and what we do is we set the sprite position of the current ball uh, into the middle of the screen 512 by 300 then we make sure that this particular sprite has a circular collision because by default everything has what's called box collision um, but because it's the ball we, we want the ball to interact like a ball would then we say set sprite physics on for this particular sprite using mode 2 which is a dynamic body Okay, unlike the bat, which we don't want to be affected by forces, we do want the balls to be affected by forces. Uh, we want to give the uh, I'll spell that right, the ball a random rotation. So we use set sprite physics angular velocity, and uh, we we pick a number between zero and ten, and then we uh, apply a mass to the ball just to give it a bit of weight. And another thing we want to do is. We apply a random negative force to push the ball up the screen at the start. Okay, so we do a, a minus random number between 90 or minus 90 and minus 180. It all sounds a bit complicated, I know. Um, well, we'll just run it and we'll, we'll play around with the values. But ball to move equals ball to move plus one and end if. So the next time it comes in here, it'll create, it'll wait until that becomes five and it'll create another ball. So we just run this you'll see that balls get created randomly and they start to interact in a physics-y way yeah? and if they hit the bat well nothing much happens actually, they just interact with the bat we'll come to that when we uh, get our next part of the program going so if I quit that and remember we, we put uh, a force here if we turn that off and run it the balls will sort of just drop down but I wanted the balls to have a force at the start and that's why I do this random minus negative number here okay now if we didn't have a circular um, collision then they would act like boxes and you can see they're not really bouncing properly and we can see this better if we turn off go back to main agc we have a system where we can put set physics debug on and this will show you the uh, boundaries of the physics objects so you can see that there's one around the bat and you can see the balls now have got square shapes to them that's how they're interacting with, with each other we don't want that we want circular ones okay see how they stack up quite easily because they're made of boxes not ideal for what we want okay so that's why uh, when we go to shoot a ball we have to make sure set physics shape circle to run that and now the debug will show you them in circles and then we've got perfect collisions okay 
So, the next part of the demo, we want to check to see if the bat has hit one of these objects. So I've got this routine here. After the after we've shot the ball and we do a sink, okay, it's important that we do a sink first, then we check. Check to see if the ball has been hit by the bat, and if it has, then we're going to apply a force to the ball to shoot it back up the screen. And we have to essentially check every ball against the bat. So we do for i equals 1 to ball total. So that's going to go from 1 all the way up to the total number of balls. So then we have a check. We, we check that, uh, see if the bat has hit a particular ball. If it has, then we use set sprite physics velocity and apply that to the current ball. And we use hit force. And hit force we look here is a minus number, it's minus 400. Why is it minus? We want the ball to go up the screen and if you know about the screen coordinates uh, y axis starts at zero and goes down and upwards. So to go off the screen we have to go in a negative way. Okay and then we print something to the screen although we don't really want that anymore that was more for me to debug. And then what I do is I add minus 5 to the hit force. So every time a ball hits the bat, the force increases by minus 5. So the game's going to get more rapid and more difficult. OK, uh, let's just run that. So we've still got the debug in, so you can see what's happening with the sprites. And when this ball hits here, it should get bounced up. There we go. And we have to try and keep the balls bouncing up. Don't let them come off the screen like so. Well, that one nearly got away. <laughs> OK. Now, to make it a bit more interesting, I'm going to add some extra things into the game. So I'm going to add some boards, um, some rotating boards to the game. So go to Make Sprites. And here we have some code. What does this do? Okay, so this will create two boards, okay, a bit like the bats really, and uh, they're going to be green. So R, R, G, B, G for green, 255, that's the image, image, image number three. I'm going to create a sprite and I'm going to size it 160 in the x axis and 20 in the y, position it on the left hand side of the screen. And turn physics on with uh, mode 3 so that it's not going to get affected by collisions and forces. And do the same for another board on the right hand side of the screen. And if we go back to the main loop here, we've got two commands here set sprite angle, okay, which uh, essentially takes the current angle and adds one to it and spins the, um, the board around in a clockwise direction. The other board gets minus one, so it goes either way. So if we run this, we should see these happening now. There we are, they're spinning round. And when the balls get near them, they will bounce off them. Like so. Now, we can play around with all these values. It's a lot, lot of fun playing with physics. Let's turn the debug off. So... Um, Turn that off, we don't need that now. We could have, say, 30 balls. And when we do shoot uh, a ball, we'll choose a number between 1 and 10, so it's going to happen more often now. Let's try that. And now we're getting lots of balls appearing, and they'll all start coming down now. It's going to get a bit crazy. Oh, can't get all these, can't catch them all. So this is a good introduction to physics objects. Uh, I'm going to move this game on in our next tutorial. Uh, add a score, add a check for when balls have come off the screen, and add a timer so we can see how long we can last and have a high score. OK, I hope this inspires you to start playing around with the 2D physics within App Game Kit. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it's quite easy to get something happening.